Very good evening, everybody, at the, uh, the second evening of uh, Design by Design, DXD, where we have two um, very hardworking, very talented, and um, relatively young architects, um, Pelle and, uh, and Samira, from uh, Rotterdam and from uh, Mumbai, uh, who will be sharing um, <clears throat> some of their work, um, their methodology, some of their ideas. They will also give an insight in um, how it is to battle as an architect. Yesterday, uh, of course, uh, Gerdian and uh, Megal gave us some insights of how you work uh, with networks. Uh, tonight it will be more about the materiality of, uh, of architecture. Um, have we always uh, have that challenge of how you can design with certain materials that we believe would work well in the long term? And then there is always a budget and then there are maintenance costs and how do you kind of deal with that? Um, I'm not going to speak very long. I've been doing a book uh, reading session, so I've been talking more than enough today. Um, I would like you to give um, first a hand for uh, our academic associate, uh, Bavin. <laughs> you can whistle if you can, uh, Megal. Um, Bavin is one of the nine... Uh, uh, one of the nine children of Professor Doshi. No, 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 sorry. B Bavin, is, uh, <laughs> uh, Bavin is one of the uh, academic uh, uh, associates at the Faculty of Architecture, and they are absolutely uh, fantastic in this whole period where the best and the worst comes out of people. Um, there's a lot of good things coming out. Yeah. Um, second uh, applause uh, is for, uh, for Pelle, who will take over the, uh, the stage. Thank you, Anna, for having me here. Um, actually, I will be talking today uh, about uh, some of, uh, of our projects we do in the office, um, mainly transformation projects, although I will start with my first project um, we designed almost 20 years ago, and it, uh, it was the start of my office. Um, Actually, I'm here together with Gert Jan, and we, we are here to, uh, to make a book on uh, Amdabad. We made already two books. Maybe you saw it before. It's uh, Learning from Mumbai, Practicing Architecture in Urban India, and Learning from Delhi. Um, and actually, I think I ch have chosen the wrong title for this lecture because it's, it's all, all about learning. It's about if you make a building, but also if you transform a building, it's about learning, learning about the building and use, using your intuition how to transform this building in a way that you are not doing harm to the existing building but you also create something new. Um, this is my office space in uh, Rotterdam and um, we just moved in, it's an old factory building, actually it could also be one of the projects I would have shown. Uh, the only thing is I did not design it myself because uh, we are part of a group of uh, architectural offices who uh, use the same space. So the first project I want to show you is actually the one we started uh, um, 20 years ago. And it was in a time that I was working for, other, for another office and my colleague Manu Heibrecht was working for uh, uh, Klaus and Kahn, uh, MVRDV, maybe you have heard about one of these. MVRDV is actually doing huge uh, housing schemes now in uh, Pune. Um, quite hip international offices. 
And when we were designing our first project, the client was very tough at first. He said to us, okay, I want to, uh, to have you designing my exhibition building in my garden, but I don't want this, uh, this uh, uh, architect coming into my garden telling me that beside my house and the style of my house, you can create a glass box. Because if you want to do that, well, we are good friends, but then you better leave the room. So we were working at these uh, international offices doing tricks and uh, making uh, giant renderings. And uh, actually, um, we felt like, yeah, well, uh, OK, we, let's do it. We go for it. And um, it's, uh, it's in this, uh, let's see if the pointer is working. Yeah, it's, this is the plot. And this is the existing uh, house with a swimming pool. Actually, you have to, to think of the Dutch climate, which is in summer uh, around 25 degrees Celsius, and uh, in winter it's around zero. So we have uh, as well rain and sun, but we need to, uh, uh, we, need, we have different conditions uh, for buildings. And um, the house was designed by, by uh, the colleague of mine, uh, by the father of the colleague of mine, in this particular style. Um, I won't talk a lot about it, but it has to, it ha has to do with uh, uh, the work of, uh, of a monk and architect, uh, Dom Hans van der Laan. Actually, it's interesting for you all to uh, look, look it up because it's, a, it's very fascinating. It's about uh, proportions. And um, in short, it's about proportions in three directions. And the basic is the, uh, the proportion of three to four. And he found out that if you make this, um, uh, if you make three to four and you make four again three and you go to four, there starts to be a, a group of measurements um, which is uh, related to, to space and also to uh, beauty. So he's also, also telling it at one point in a very nice documentary, the difference between leaves on a tree you see a lot of leaves and then one is bigger. What is the difference between these leaves and the other leaf? And it turns out, I think everyone experienced this, if you make, for example, uh, facade drawings, that's in 2D, but it's an easy way to, to, uh, to tell the story, that uh, sometimes a window looks good and sometimes it's, it's, it's just not square, it's just not the right proportion. And um, the tool he gave us is very interesting. Although the client asks us to repeat this style, we, we choose to use the theory behind this proportion to, uh, to make a new building. It's uh, two levels, so one underground, one above. It has to do also with building regulations, but also with a hierarchy in the, in the garden. Um, in our opinion, we should not go wider than the widest measurement in the existing house. So that, that was a sort of choice we already made by the start. Um, you come in, you enter, you have a big space with a sort of chapel kind of extra space behind it. It's, it's an exhibition building for religious art. You go down and you come into a space underground where we have a patio and we have, uh, at the far end, we have a fireplace and the most intimate place of the building. And in that time, so, so think of 20 years back, we, uh, of course, were working already in AutoCAD, but we were thinking, yeah, well, how could you use also uh, uh, drawing in AutoCAD and making nice drawings? Because you can make easily, you could make a 3D and then the perspective is maybe correct. But it's not telling you the same as uh, what we wanted to show in our drawings. So we were experimenting with uh, experimenting with uh, the, the drawings kind of method by having a section and, and uh, choose a different perspective from one part to the other part of the, of the building. One other thing was that because it's about religious art um, and he has this swimming pool in his garden with his, uh, with his uh, daughter of 16 at that time, 
um, it was not a good idea to make windows looking out the building to, into his garden. So it's a very intimate uh, uh, building where the light is only coming from above and you can't see to the outside only through windows which are high. So one of the experiments was to find out how can you make a building feeling nice without having this relation with the outside world. And another thing we, we, we wanted to achieve is that um, because we had made a choice of this <coughs> measurement, of this measurement which was sort of linked to the existing house, um, it turned out that the plan became almost corridor-like. So how can you make a building feel more white than the, the space is actually? So we were experimenting with the light from coming from different directions, um, like the stair being apart from the wall, so the light is penetrating through it to the ground. Um, the, the columns uh, making space. And we made uh, uh, these uh, light uh, diagrams to uh, show what we wanted to achieve. Actually, we made them before it was built, so it's, it was also trying to find out a way how to express um, actually the reason for the, for the building. <coughs> we designed also a sort of a, a, a round way or a way in the garden with this uh, <coughs> A green roof. Actually the front side which is a very closed facade and uh, uh, only used by occasions because normally uh, the, the client is going through his garden and enters his own uh, building. Another thing what we learned in Delft was to be honest with our detailing and in this building we were not honest because everyone will uh, uh, see a brickwork building with a concrete window on top and then a sink roof. But the reality is that it's uh, a steel structure um, to keep it up. So we were doing things which we were not teached. Um, Delft has a very strong tradition in teaching you uh, that you should be, well, probably you, you, you use this word as well, honest in uh, in. Uh, uh, in what you create and how you talk about it and how program is translated into uh, a form. And even we made also uh, a facade which is from the outside has a different shape as from the inside. For the, for in the inside we needed only a small niche and on the outside we needed uh, uh, this, uh, this square. Um, it was the start of the office and we got a lot of attention with the, with, with the building, probably because we did something which was different as what we were uh, uh, doing in the offices. We at that time uh, were still working. And um, the interesting thing happened that only uh, two years ago, uh, the client came back and he said, well, I, sell, I will sell my house, I will divide my garden into two, and I want to, uh, to live in the exhibition pavilion. <laughs> so, we, so we were thinking, yeah, but okay, um, can't you think of something else? Of course, that's your first reaction. <laughs> because we were successful with the first design, so why, but anyway, so how to transform a building which is that much into itself, like a contemplation, light, no windows, how to uh, transform that into a new building. And what we actually did, we, we made, we made a, a sort of courtyard building from it. So we had to find out how to extend the uh, existing building and to make more windows to, uh, to live there. I mean, it should be a nice house to live in. And it's not, uh, that's not about no windows to your garden, for example. So we did a lot of... Uh, of studies and at the end actually we, we uh, discovered that if we would copy the roof but in a different um, form, lower, and if we would extend the, the space around, we, we, we made a sort of uh, a new, um, new composition with a completely other uh, style than the building had before. Actually the street side is still uh, similar, but uh, but the garden site is completely uh, open. 
This is the existing house. So it, uh, so it reminds us actually that the existing house had a, a similar uh, way of, uh, of organizing around uh, 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 of the first part of the garden. But our program was, was uh, uh, functioning differently. So we, we, because they wanted to live on one floor because they are now around 80 years old and they want to stay here uh, until the end. Um, so this is the existing building you recognize. We made a sort of living kitchen in between the sleeping uh, uh, wing. And this is a sort of in between uh, outside and inside. So you can sit in, uh, until late uh, in the sun because we want to have the sun on our face and warm us with the sun. This is from the back side. Actually, by now, he, he probably has a swimming pool here because it's, it's, it was still the, the ground, only ground when we uh, made the pictures last uh, summer. And in the wing, we have a sort of surface area in this wooden uh, wall with toilet and uh, other uh, installation facilities and uh, bathrooms to the left. And it feels really like a different uh, building. Um, and again, actually, it had to do with learning from your old building and trying to make something extra. So the main thing was this living room where everything was enclosed. And um, we opened it up to one side. Actually, to two sides. There's also a window on this side. And. Um, it, it's transformed into a living room. And actually what was very interesting uh, when, when we had this, uh, when we made this building is that the acoustic in the building is brilliant. Um, so now still they, they, have, uh, they have their uh, piano and they have uh, uh, people playing in the, in the house like they used to have when the exhibition the, uh, uh, pavilion was in use. So this is the the garden uh, room, and you can open it up completely. I don't know how much time I have left, because uh, there are two more projects. Five minutes, okay, I go faster. Um, because this is about a project I made by myself, but the, the projects I, w I show you now, they are made by someone else, someone, someone else Sometimes we don't know. This is in a building from the 17th century. Um, it's in the historical center of uh, Schiedam, a Dutch town. And um, we made a competition proposal where we had a sort of the, the, the building itself and we made within the building, we made a new interior as a, as a small house. Um, the reason for it was that they needed program like office space in the middle of the building, but we had no windows to the outside. Um, so we, we said, okay, we, we want to have done windows from, from the roof and get light in and make windows to the interior. So this is the, this is the Waag. So it's in a sort of in the corner of a, uh, of a church building with a high tower. It had uh, uh, problems with, uh, with uh, humidity and the uh, walls which were painted and painted again. And they wanted to transform it into an information uh, center for the city. There's a floor on the first floor which was very low and there was the, the, the roof structure. Um, old details of doors opening, but of course in the time the building was built, they were just opening it up and, uh, and the climate inside was almost the same as the outside. And we needed to, to transform this into a building where we where, where you could work, where you could be uh, warm, and when you could, where you could not have uh, too hot uh, days in the summer. So it, it meant a lot of uh, measuring. Actually, this is the, the, the city of uh, Schiedam, and there, there are a lot of windmills. We are at the moment uh, doing a, a project where we transform a windmill into a museum. But back to the Waag. So we made uh, a we used the existing structures. We, we, as, uh, we, we, we made new 
light walls inside and we have the, the light from above, from different sides. We used an existing uh, staircase, an existing uh, toilet uh, facility. The weight uh, uh, balance was restored and came back. We have offices on the first floor, offices on the second floor. New stair coming up, small kitchenette. And then one thing is that these old buildings, there's no line is straight, so everything needs to be uh, balanced in a way and the main thing is always uh, to balance your floor because if your floor is not straight you feel like you 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 walk like this and it's not it's not functioning very nicely we had to we had to make some changes in the structure we had this uh, because it's a uh, uh, it's a important monument we had we have a gutter we needed to make a new steel construction for the second floor going under the gutter, so it has a sort of <coughs> peculiar shape. We wanted to show the existing old walls of the, of the building, so we, we cleaned them, and that's actually also very good for, for the future of the building because the, the, the walls can breathe again. New pro program comes in, the new balance comes in. We showed the difference between old and new. This is now the new entrance, so the doors are open normally. And then you enter through a new door. We made the interior where we have a sort of an exhibition kind of uh, interior where everything is in front of the walls. The small house if you look up, but the main purpose is of course to bring light in and to have a very pleasant uh, center on the ground floor. And we went through all the detailing until the last screw. And actually I like the, the, the contrast between the old walls and, uh, and the new uh, very uh, straight detailing. You have windows at particular points to, f to have fuse to the outside and to have light from all directions. Also to have uh, a, a nice uh, in-between area because you're, you don't have real windows to the outside so you have windows to the inside of the building. And you look through, through new, build, through new uh, uh, windows uh, to the outside. Actually, maybe I leave this project for next time. Cl click through it. Yeah. <laughs> This is in Den Bosch, another old town in, uh, in, uh, in, in Holland, but this was on a, in an extension area where they build a, a lot of new housing and, and other uh, office facilities, but this was one of the old buildings which was kept. It's an old uh, factory building for uh, medicines, and uh, it, it actually it was very simple. It was uh, this form, they call it Schepdak in uh, Dutch, I don't know the English word, with light from the north, closed walls in brick, and that's it. And we had to transform it. We had to make a new parking garage under it and uh, to make uh, a new interior with a lot more program. And the idea was to make a program like a, a sort of market hall, but it's, say, a supermarket with a lot of fresh uh, food and uh, freshly prepared food, um, places to sit down, to eat, to drink, to meet, um, combined with extra spaces for offices and, uh, and other restaurants. And they needed a parking garage under it. So we, we had a, a real hell of a job to make a parking garage under this sort of building, which never was meant to have a garage like that under the structure. <coughs> so we needed to bring in real big beams to uh, not have it collapsing during the building uh, uh, period. We had a, a very close, uh, at a very close to the building, there were pipes, so we, we needed to be within one meter from the outside of the building. So it was really uh, a, a big thing to uh, to make it. Then we we went we made in a new construction, standing on its own. In steel and in uh, concrete. A new entrance to the parking garage very clean and straight. 
And then we needed to make new, uh, new, new facade, a new facade where we had on one hand an urban designer questioning for a lot of, a lot of interaction between the inside and the outside, but the, the market itself didn't want to have a lot of windows. So we, we needed to come up with an idea to make bigger gestures than, um, than what, uh, what was expected from the urban designer. So we, we made a, a sort of um, frames, and sometimes the frame is bigger, like, like on this side, and then the frame becomes uh, advertisement or artwork or something else within the framework. Um, it, it provides places to sit, it provides entrances. This is actually, this, the, the, we did on two, two places, we did a complete um, uh, open uh, shed to, to give extra attention to the inside and to attract you to the inside. Another thing is that, that we, we were very happy with the, new, with the construction which was within the brick wall. So we could, something which was hide for, for all the time, we could give it, to, give it back. It's a sort of present by the building. And it gave a sort of very nice depth to the construction and the new elements. So here you see also the, the advertising being part of the <coughs> facade. The concrete structure, which is visible again. And then the explosion of interior. That's it. Thank you.